So let's have a little reference here. The red line is two feet long. So we measured from the top of my head to basically where my elbow is when it comes down next to my rib cage, and that's two feet close enough. All right, now let's take a look at some casts. Whoops. And we'll get a sense of um, what the loop size is, roughly. So we'll call that one, let's call that one two and a half feet. We'll call that one, well, two feet. Okay, here comes a nice narrow one. See, nice, nice, tight, fly. Boy, that's more like, that's less than a foot right there, but, oh, wait a sec, what's wrong with the fly like there? What's that big dip in it? Oh my gosh, it's a tailing loop. Terrible. All right, we'll keep going here. Foot and a half, call it two feet. Ah, dang, it's another one of them tailing loops. So we're going to talk about what I'm doing to go from, let's say, two foot loops to even one foot loops. So you know the story from the roll cast tight loops and wide loops that we, we just looked at. You know that I'm going to start really slow and I'm going to end by juicing or even jolting the rod. Now it starts to come forward. I have very little speed. My hand's coming down, so I'm pulling my elbow down and the rod's rotating a little bit. I don't have much rod speed. I've just barely got a little blur in the rod. Okay, the rod's starting to load somewhat now. Starting to load somewhat now, but the whole point is I started pretty slow. And even now, I'm not going very fast. Still not going very fast. Now the rod's getting blurry, bent over, only at the end of the stroke, pretty much, do we see some serious blurring slash bending in the rod. And just before RSP, I guess that's about maximum rod bend right there. And then fairly short stop, there's my RSP. And gosh, that's a pretty nice fly leg. It ain't, it's, it's close enough to perfect for somebody like me. And that's a, what is that, a one foot loop? Something like that. So if we go, if we do our two feet again here, something like the arrows ballpark, let's call that a foot and a half loop. We'll look at some more loops here. Yeah, fairly early start. Not going very fast, not going very fast. I'm gonna guess this will be a tight loop. Maximum rod bend is way out just before RSP. And we get, wow. All right, call that a foot plus two inches or something. Something like that. Slow line speed, closed loop, and I like to cast like this for my students so that everything's really slow. If I threw in a, in a, with a line speed more like, let's say, Jones or Steve Rajas, I'd have loops that they'd be happier with because they, they, they wouldn't cross, um, they wouldn't close. But the reason I do this is because it's really, really slow and it's pretty empowering for students to see a cast that's almost made in slow motion and makes them think, oh, I can do that. I don't have to be strong or athletic. So my line speed here really comes from a desire to kind of empower students to make it look pretty easy. So yeah, my loops are closed, but it doesn't affect my fishing at all. And, and there's enough uh, line speed in that to get the line to go out there nicely. It, it does fine. We're going to see a nice straight line path here. You get little tail dimples in the dog leg, but pretty good. So
So here we go. Wow. Look how much that rod is loaded already, really early in the stroke. That rod's really bent over. For somebody like me, who's just a slow line speed caster anyway, for me, that's starting with a whole lot of speed. And certainly compared to the cast we've done before, and I'll, I'll do a side-by-side -side for you here in a little bit. But you see, I've got, I've got the kind of load in that rod that, I've seen, that you've seen in the earlier clips just before rod straight position. Boy, that's, that's really interesting. It, to me, that rod's already kind of unloading. It's definitely unloading now. So what does this tell us? If maximum load was relatively early and the load on the rod is decreasing as we get closer and closer to RSP, means we're going to slow down to a stop. And what would that suggest? We're going to throw a domey convex loop. And no, it's not a huge loop like a lot of your students throw, but it's big compared to the ones that we've looked at so far. You do see a concavity here, but I will say if you look at a lot of your students' wide loops, certainly some of them, you will see a, conve a concavity in there somewhere, um, oftentimes. Let's look at um, the, the sort of the line slap uh, between the stripper and the grip. If you hear, or your student hears, that kind of of the, of the line slapping against the butt of the rod right there, that almost certainly means you made a really nice, crisp, positive stop that's going to just flip your tip over into what Mel Krieger used to call the tip cast. You see the same at the back cast stop, not as dramatically. There it is again, slap, slap, slap. Let's look at it one more time. Click, 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 click. Click, 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 maybe. Yeah. Now let's see what kind of paths we're throwing here. Nice SLP. And you can see that Macy just finds this fascinating. Okay, how would you teach this? Uh, there are a lot of ways to do it, obviously. Uh, one way is uh, with the verbal description that you gave. Uh, typically what I tell people um, is to go way too slow early and midway through the cast, so slow that they know it's wrong and that they know they'll have a bad cast. And I tell them to make the fast part of the cast at the end way too short. So I tell them to make a mistake by going too slow here and too abruptly there. And this obviously is for somebody who A, really can't make a power snap or they're just not making a power snap. And yes, we have plenty of students like that. Or B, is making a power snap, but it's coming over a very long arc. So you want to tighten somebody's loop? Slow, 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 slow. Slow, 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 slow. And, oh, by the way, yes, this is an ice fishing rod. I live in Maine. If you lived here, you'd, you'd ice fish too. Um, by the way, one of the, a really powerful teaching technique for me is to do something what Navy SEALs called design to fail. In other words, I try to get my students to fail, in their minds, failure, by going too slow here. They'll think it's failure to go so slow here. And they'll think it's failure to go like that. And if they do actually go too slow here, and they're so abrupt there that they tail, to me that's a win, because now the, the good cast for them lies somewhere between what they were doing and what they just did by actually doing what I told them to do. Because I don't really want them to go too slow here, and I don't really want them to cast too abruptly here. I'm trying to get them over the hump that, that they're stuck in by, by basically directing them to fail. And it's a remarkably powerful technique. The way I teach this kinesthetically is to have the student stand behind me, put her hand on top of mine, her thumb right in front of my thumb on the grip. I have her close her eyes so she only feels the cast. She doesn't have all this visual information coming in and conflicting with what she's feeling. So here we go. 
And I'm exaggerating the snappiness of those stops, the super abrupt stop. Yes, I'm throwing tendencies to tail, and I just don't care because she is so far away from throwing a tendency to tail because she either doesn't have a power snap at all or her power snap comes over this big long arc, which means she throws big convex loops. When your student has their hand on yours like this, this is for me by far historically the best way to get them to feel the cast. Way back 30 years ago, when I was told I had to put my hand on top of the student's hand, they just didn't get a very good feel for the cast. This way, they really feel what the rod's doing, especially when their eyes are closed. So super powerful technique. To throw a tight loop, begin with very little rod speed. Inching the rod, inching the rod, not much load, not much load, no, almost no blurring, barely beginning to blur. Now we get into some real load, just really very shortly before RSP. The tip flips over and using our two foot indicator there, we see we get about a two foot back cast loop. Nice. So to recap, you have the tail and you have the, you have the fish straight position, right? All is well.